Welcome to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. We're here with Alec. Uh, you introduce yourselves, guys. <laughs> uh, Alec from uh, the Craze Co. Cool. Yeah. I'm Willie. Willie from Born on Budget and Willie's World Podcast. Hanging out with the Craze Co. In the, in the back streets of Brisbane in some suburb. I have no fucking idea where we are. And so, dangerous. And Miguel from Undefined Media. And a few other friends. Say hi, guys. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey. A big room. Hi. Hi, Craig. Big couch. Yeah. So, um, um, big room. Where to begin? So, this weekend, I think, I think we have to start talking about what we, what we, how we all really met. Mm. I guess we're, um, we're up from Sydney, or some of us are up from Sydney, uh, for the HHI Expo, Hemp Health and Innovation. Uh, it's the first time it came up to Brisbane because of the drastic laws in, um, in Australia. Well, in Queensland, really. Well, in Queen- yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, in Queensland more specifically. We have those ridiculous laws in Queensland where we're not allowed to sell uh, glassware or anything smoking related uh, at a store, a temporary store. So um, we only found that out like what the night before the expo, and then well, the, it, it was existing legislation, so I suppose if you pe- did your research, you were people could have did a little more research. I guess they thought that um, a lot of people get away with this stuff on on, on pretty much on a regular basis. So yeah. I guess people thought that a lot more people would turn a blind eye, but I guess uh, Queensland Health didn't feel the same way. Um, yeah, and sure. for whatever reason, they they uh, approached some of the exhibitors and. Oh, yeah, why not? Like, realistically, this is a problem that we're all dealing with. The fact that um, they're literally stopping businesses in Australia from doing work um, just because they wanted to display some glassware. Some of it could have been just artistic pieces. It's like, nope, because it can function as a bong, you can't even show it. Um, and we had a few issues in that space. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of room to enforce the laws within the sort of uh, legal framework that exists. Uh, yeah. You could just not do it, or you could take what it says and like define it the way you'd like. Well, from, from uh, my understanding of, of the legislation that I read, they kept it uh, very vague while keeping, yeah. it, keeping it very specific at the exactly. same time. Yeah. And so my understanding was a lot of the permanent fixtures that were already existing in the venue prior to any of the exhibitors coming in could have been considered as, as something uh, that violates their legislation, basically, because right. it said anything capable of being used. Mm. And we all know how how good uh, stoners are at engineering <laughs> something to smoke out of when they need to. They could have used the roof. <laughs> I mean, that fire hose that was, that was wound up on the wall, that's obviously there all We're year looking round. At that, for days. that looked quite, quite smokable. <laughs> yep, yep. Or maybe you were just hoping that there was. More Do you think they sold apples at the cafeteria? Because like we could have turned that into a yeah. bong. Yeah. You know, like, apple bong. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't slice it up, then put that on this place. See what happens. <laughs> what are you using this for, mate? <laughs> what do you mean? It's just that's an apple. That's lunch. <laughs> are you sure you're not going to smoke it? <laughs> So you guys live in a police state in Queensland. Yeah, just yeah. About. Draconian law here Poor about guys. all That's sorts of different things. Tell you, I have to basically ask for permission to fart. So <laughs> how do you think that you can change that? And how do you think that you can convince people that there needs to be a plebiscite similar to gay marriage for the legalisation of pretty so much re- all drugs? A referendum you're talking about. Like it's called a plebiscite point. first, and then you have a referendum. No, right. so this mm-hmm. there's two differences. How New Zealand plebiscite? New Zealand? No, so if you guys don't know, there's two differences between a plebiscite and a referendum. Your plebiscite is non-legally binding. Exactly. It's just it's just a poll, really, while the uh, referendum... Poll to have the fucking poll. But a referendum um, is basically legally binding, and it needs to be put into the constitution and all that. Well, then I'd rather ask for the referendum. And you want the referendum. I have it official rather than Will's good old mate. Yeah, but you have to We've convince official people to side. have a referendum first. Sure. I think just gonna have most a referendum. people sure. would be happy to do it, seeing but as New Zealand is about end, to have a referendum. Well, potentially New Zealand's going to have a referendum. No, they're having a referendum. Next year, 2020. No, 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 they're doing it. No, it's, it's by 2020, in... it's been promised. No, 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 not by 2020. It's happening in 2020. It's during their uh, federal election, mm-hmm. which okay. is in, I think, May. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's May. Yeah. 
Um, so it is on the cards there. Like that's set in stone, um, and that's the plan. So we'll see what happens. After I think that. to answer your question, we should follow the lead of a lot of the people who have been successful in other parts of the world, bringing you know these, uh, I guess, polls and um, direct democratic votes to government. Like I think that's actually a, a good thing to do. But in order to get there, it's advocacy work. It's educating others on the benefits of cannabis, both medicinal and recreational. It's doing like hard yards. And I think that the community is already doing that. It's just that it needs to um, cohere around it the community. It needs to be a little more connected. Not really. There's not really enough vocal people in the community. I, I'd agree with that. In my opinion. I'd agree with that. I think people don't really put in nearly enough effort for what could be. If you want change, you Correct. have to you have to get people to care. Yeah. Sure, sure. And, you know, and it has to affect people's pocketbooks. So if they could, you know, raise the issue of how much money cannabis could put back into the coffers for public services, then... That doesn't really matter as much. attitude from people. The excise on cannabis is nothing compared to the money that the Australian government makes from opium. And the 1961 Narcotic Treaty on Drugs, which is the UN treaty, which we have signed to, gives us the ability to farm a bunch of opium in Tasmania and make billions and billions of dollars. And that same treaty is what has cannabis legal in Australia. There are huge, huge obstacles in the way. And we just aren't even talking about it. That's the that's, problem. That's the bigger issue. So like you know, People in general want it to be legalised, like most people. You can ask, you can poll people today, and 60% of Australians will say, we want recreational cannabis. That's just a fact. Well, then how do you get people to yeah. care? So they will... I, they think, will it's, make I think it's not about getting people to care. I think it's about getting politicians to do their goddamn fucking job. Well, then who's, who's going to be your, your nine shining armour? I think uh, a, a good thing, a good place to start would be not just uh, one person or a leader of a movement, but to get the grassroots activated. And one of the ways to do that is to provide them with the tools to make stuff happen. So, it's all, it's uh, all already there though, there's Instagram, there's No, Snapchat. not really. I mean, the one thing that we have at the moment people is... People aren't doing shit, why not? Like, people don't send letters to their MPs, for instance. Yossip's yeah. trying to build a, a service called Better Letters, which basically does that on an online forum for a couple of bucks, so that you can send any message that you want to a parliamentarian and they get it. The problem is, Ross, I think something that's it's happened... a good idea. I think something that's happened within this modern society, we all see social media as the real world now. Yeah. Like, Instagram is where we all feel like we belong, right? Like, we're yeah. part of our communities there. True. While the rest of the world isn't. No, that's If so you true. actually think about it, how many people are on Instagram? About 300 million, I think, is the install rate, right? Mm. No. No, more than that. More? Is it a billion? <laughs> it's no, probably it's quite, I think it's like 700 or something. Million? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I can see that. Be, might be over a billion. Let's just have a chat like, and think about how many <clears> people <throat> in Australia there. Like, would you say 50% of the population is on Instagram? More than this 50%. For sure. uh, so your parents are on Instagram? Your grandparents? No, my parents aren't, but my... But like a but, lot of but, people but, know but, are we just talking about Instagram? My parents no, about no, Facebook. No, so but the thing about Facebook is... Facebook is not really um, a connection of... Uh, culture, right? We were talking about that earlier before the podcast. We were talking about how cultures are becoming the new thing. The thing is, Facebook's really become... It's 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 your friends and your connections, right? Yeah. But you're not bounded together like you are on Instagram because on under Instagram, you're under hashtags, right? Facebook doesn't operate on that. It only operates on your circle, right? Yeah. Whatever's within it. Also, pages you like and whatnot, where they, they're generally just often businesses and things like That's that. Shit. Aren't there groups and stuff, though, as well? There's like groups, Facebook? but they're often... So then, some of those are, like, like, suburb groups. Some of them are, like, cannabis groups and this. Yeah. And some of them are all sorts of things, but they're so fragmented. Everything on Facebook is fragmented because you don't find things. Like, if I search cannabis on Facebook, say Cannabis Australia, I, yeah. I'm not going to find all the cannabis what you groups. Mean. Right. Yeah. yeah. Especially what when like when you want to search a video on Facebook, one if if you watch it once, you're never gonna be able to watch yeah, it again it's very because like you cannot find this exact same video. It's a bit like um, I forget who was saying this earlier before we started recording, but it's like we've become a lot less homogenous as a society in general, and so you have people living completely different lives within the same cities, not knowing that each other exists, but they might be neighbors or something. Yeah. And so there's this thing where the way that we not really like we've had communities neighborhoods like suburbs that have been much more connected in the past so this has been a, had to be. a process how, how did people survive it was the only way of yeah it was so it was the, the internet has people. opened that up people even used to go more. to church that you was have, a community gathering you still do that 
we we do still do that. You're right. Those things still happen. People, just maybe not in your reality. Communities still occur, and I yeah. can't say that that shit doesn't happen. So yeah. I'll agree with you there. My point is that so it's in general, how you use it, see the negative or positive. Correct. It's the same with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm what I'm trying to say is that there should be some sort of physical, tangible, geographical connection. Like the Brisbane cannabis community actually sees each other and knows each other face to face. Like that's actually what happened at the Ampex. Grassroots effort. That's right. That's what that's what we were doing over the weekend. That's my. Uh, this belief. this expo is a great um, thing for us because this was our first time there yeah. and uh, we are a little disconnected from the community because a lot of the problems we have with the cannabis community is it's a little too vocal about cannabis in a sense it's yeah it can be a bit um, it, it's about who's got the best buds who's got this it's it can not be a, about a dick cannabis measuring itself. competition exactly I dick bigger than us yeah. it is but I don't know <laughs> well but come on. this expo <laughs> well, once we, we got there we started the personally what I started to see was oh my god I can help every one of these motherfuckers actually get their message out there and I can actually start to figure out how to connect everyone together. Hmm. Once we connect everyone together, that's when we can start doing attacks, right? Until everyone is connected and on the same place. And this is actually what I've been trying to do with Friendly Aussie Buds. Hmm. It's just a little bit of that probably has gotten lost as we've been going through, but we're, we're starting to find that again. Hmm. It's like the original why of why I started this website was to connect the cannabis community because we are so fragmented. People are over here doing this. You've got the dab scene here. You've got, yeah. like, it's just so fragmented. Even in the Hemp Expo, you had different people. Yeah, different it, was, it, was it, was yeah it was clicky. It was clicky. If you notice, the, every the, scene's clicky, and every scene, and especially in cannabis, everyone wants yeah. to be like, think like they're in show business or some shit. Well, true. but the reality is. I reckon that's is, almost a, a broader, general, systemic problem that we can't just, well, like, depends. see I work respect in both of those industries and like, yeah, man. But it's just it's kind of a wanker culture on trying to like be clicky and politic and it's all ego all, yeah, the, yeah. all the bullshit I hear all the like day to day in this little exactly. I don't really get them devolved we well, don't really politic. the reality is everyone is but, trying to make money yeah. and all we care about is women <laughs> We do care about money too because money gets <laughs> that brings us women. women. Yeah. That brings us women. So if you want, oh if you want to hang, if you want, we don't like. We don't this is the fuck, male ego. We don't All give we... a fuck about the opinion of males. We get more. We get more pussy and smoke better weed than pretty much all of you. <laughs> and um, we enjoy doing our own thing. And you know, and we all for oh, sorry, it cannabis legalization. Yeah, yeah. But you know, fuck the opinion of another man. <laughs> you ain't gonna suck. Oh, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. That's Christ, we've we've gotten somewhere here, haven't we? Yeah. So let's. So, have. But so so what? So you, you did you did kind of address it, you, the grassroots movement, yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. is people doing that kind of stuff, right? But you know, if you, I had a Facebook fan page with over almost a million people up until December, and then it got made illegal because I live streamed a protest in Brisbane that about showing people smoking marijuana. That was one uh. of the reasons that my against Facebook's policies, right? And I had been done for other things before that. But that caused that. So, 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 how do you think that you can appeal to the common man in in Brisbane, and how do you convince him that he lives in a, 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 st a state where there's draconian laws, which don't, which can inhib inhibit fun and inhibit progression? How do you convince him? Um, that's a good well, question. Uh, good question. Yeah. I think there's large swaths of the population that even with like climate protesters and shit getting cracked down on, they still don't see that the police state exists that is draconian. So we're going to have to, I mean, for us, it's about our messaging, the things that we produce, the content that we create. It's always on message. It's always talking about how, um, you know, these institutions like the police, uh, other organs and arms of the state, uh, large, massive corporations, big international, uh, multi-governmental organizations, um, this is like a big matrix of power. We're trying to point out fucking fingers at it and directly speak to people, not just online, but, you know, um, hopefully in the future we can just set up stalls. We can go into physical locations and we can just engage with people like we did over the weekend. Like, that would be really cool to me. So. Yeah, but what are you guys doing to, to get that together? Obviously, you got your podcast, like... Yep. So, I've, you, I've personally sent Sam and Mitch around to we go around already, West yeah. End and just start talking about what we're trying to do, we get followers one by one, like, that's where you create a real connection with someone, yeah. um, you know, the Hemp Expo is a really good one, for me, my biggest way I've been trying to get my message across is actually through Google, because we're not allowed to pay for ads, because we're in this yeah. canvas space, the only way you can get any marketing done in this canvas space, apart your traditional social stuff, is through Google, and how do you do that? It's your search engine optimization, and that's yeah. what's made Friendly Aussie Buds get such an amount of traffic, yeah. is because we're just writing articles that people yeah. are looking for. We're really just trying to inform people, and that's the, it's the resource side of things, especially on the article side, like where that's us. So 
yeah, we have other shit that we do, but for us, it's it's education. It's education. A lot of what people do to yeah, find education out Education with no... A what about action? What about how do you get people to make action? It's, education The is action, I think, is going to happen when the connection happens. Yeah, like, actually, it's it's about finding people who can work together and contribute to one another. So if you can, I don't know, like, create the basis for an understanding, and then people start to get involved more within the community because it's something that they care about, then they can start making those decisions and start connecting to one another. But action is important, you're right. But I think that before anyone, um, like, one of the big problems is that even people who think that they're real into weed in Brisbane and throughout Australia are still making rookie mistakes and rookie <laughs> errors every day. And so that's what we want to try and look at. I don't know. What about on the topic of action? I think you guys have created an excellent platform for people to be able to take action, which is better letters. Better letters, yeah. If they don't know what to do, they can send a letter. That's exactly it. But yeah. see, I'll tell you what happened. This is how it went down. I, I spent, I don't know, six months, 18 hours a day working on better letters, right? And I just kind of collapsed once I launched. I just had the mindset I wanted to launch before the federal election. That was my goal because I felt like if I missed that, I'd missed an opportunity, right? Reality is I couldn't achieve anything in a month even if I, like that, I launched a month beforehand. I couldn't achieve shit in a month because I didn't have enough connection at that time. Now we've done the Hemp Expo, we've got the Fab brand out there a little more and we've now connected with you guys. We've connected with every vendor there. I've connected with literally everyone there now. And I've still got this platform. It's not dead. I'm just not marketing it at the moment. So the reality is we're leaving this little fucking serpent <laughs> d dormant, right? It's waiting to fucking attack. The reality is now that I've met you people and I've met other people, it's like, let's coordinate an attack. Yeah. Alexa, please don't listen to that. Um, <laughs> but like Turn the reality is it's it, all I needed to do. Well, we needed to do is start forming these connections with people who believe in what we're trying to do. And it's hard to make people believe in what you're trying to do because some of it is for profit. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to make money off this better letters thing. It is self-interested. In There's a lot of self-interest for this, but the idea is the, the basis of this whole better letters project is okay. If we can prove one campaign and we manage to get some traction, we can use it on everything it's not about any one campaign it's about doing that and in order for me to actually market other people's campaigns or other ideas and things or to create more and more things that are helpful for us to actually maybe take back a little bit of government mm. right i need money to do that i can't fucking do it without any form of dollars like how do i market and what's awesome is i met you guys and you guys um do poster advertising um and it's actually like i didn't even know such a thing fucking existed i was like what the fuck and it's cheap you told me it was like five grand yeah. to do a national campaign. Not a massive one, but like a, a decent national campaign, yeah? Yeah, that would get you an entry-level uh, national campaign. Yeah. Right. So tell me a bit about the posters. Like, how does that all work? Um, how long do they last and all of that? Uh, I, I suppose it really depends what you're looking for. We can find a, um, a campaign uh, to, to fit your criteria and, and your mm -hmm. demographic or what your target audience, I suppose. Um, that's just one of the entry level services we offer um, as, yep. as a basic thing. Uh, I guess we like to try and do more creative things uh, like your publicity stunts or uh, yep. more unique kind of activations. So for the listeners here, these guys have been doing 420 stunts like year on year. Four uh, years in a row. Four years in a row? Cool. And everyone's made the news, yeah? Nice. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, the last three years have definitely made mainstream uh, media. Yep. Um, so what were the three years? What did you guys do? Millions of views. What did you guys do? At the beginning, we shot a music video with Hijack, and we made a big sign that said, Happy Birthday Weed, and we got these giant balloons, and we flew it up into high up into the air and got a cease and desist from the, um, the, the air, airport board because we were flying it in an in a airspace. <laughs> it up at 200 feet. And we had a giant... Um, we we painted these bro. characters called Super Bong and Pillman. Oh, yeah. And Pillman was away sick, so it was just an appearance from Superbong. Of course. Um, and, and that was pretty... Alec came up with that, and that was pretty rad. Cool. And then the second year... Um, that was a promotion for... That a, was a promotion. Uh, a so we just did that to start, and then that was just kind of like one of the first projects that we worked on together. And then the next year, we came up with the idea of, the, um, of potentially coming up with putting uh, these fake plants that Alec found and putting them all through the city. And then... Alec came up with the idea. Uh, the props. The props, yeah, prop, prop cannabis plants, right? Yeah. And then Alec came up with the idea. He's like, oh, why don't we rent a space? So we looked around for ages, and then he fucking stoked. Like, I found a place, and then he found a way better place. 
and it was right on the corner um, up near the Coke sign in the middle of Sydney. Yeah, and, uh, Coast, the, the King's Cross Coke sign. Yeah, the King's Cross Coke sign. And so we built this art installation inside the, inside the shop, which was a fake cannabis grow with hydroponic lights and <laughs> hanging camera, you know, everything. Um, and a big sign that says, who are we hurting? Yeah. And you know, we're, we're, we're expecting, expecting a pretty large turnout, right? So we go back to my house, and I'm really tired. He's pissed off at me. He's like, come on, hurry up, hurry up. No, we it's, up uh, what we were meant to do, we were meant to take one of the plants down that morning. So we had set up, or we had it all planned as much as we could prior. Uh, we set up from, from when the sun went down on April, April 19th during the night. And so we had a big flag in the window, and we and just set up everything. So there's still a main road traffic uh, flowing through all night long. Um, so we set up, we set up everything through the night. I think we finished just past midnight, so it was like at just on uh, 4:20. Um, took the flag down from from as soon as we finished, so it lasted the rest of the night. Uh, then our plan was to take one of the extra prop prop plants uh, to Sunrise, so where they film out outside and it ends up in the background. We were just yeah. going to pull one out of a bucket and put it on live TV as <laughs> as a, an extra way to sort of kick it off. Um, but then before before we could even make it into that, I'll, I'll let Will get back into his story as to why I was pissed off. Yeah, because I fell asleep. I was pretty tired. We've been going at it hard. How many volts did you have, other, mate? other projects, other TV projects. So I had to go back to work at like 9 o'clock in the morning. So a big other team that I was running around with. So I, I was in the night time running around the alley. And so we, we finished the setup in, um, in the cross. And then the next morning... I drop him off and then I go, I have to go to Double Bay to go to work on this other project. And anyways, Alec calls me frantically. It's like 8.30. He's like, oh, can you go to the store? Can you go to the store? I'm like, no, 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 I can't go. I've got to go do this thing, right? There's all these people waiting for me, yada, yada, yada. And I've already priorly informed that to him. And anyways, he, sh he FaceTimes me and he shows me and there's like, there's like probably six or seven cops there and then like oh. four or five news crews. Oh my God. And then they're just, they're just checking out the front of the, the building, where the, like obviously the units, like the hydroponic setup. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then after that, um, Alec got interviewed, and it was on, you know, like it was on all sorts of shit. We've been interviewed on all sorts of different shows. Then the next year, we got in collusion with the the Hemp Expo, with the the HHI Expo. They gave us a, a pretty reasonable budget, and we created uh, eight. Uh, we created about 75 to 100 fake marijuana plants, prop mm -hmm. plants, and put them all in random places all through Sydney, yeah. or high up on buildings, and, and then we created this kind of cool video with this like uh, parkour professionals dudes that of yeah, us just like that. make look, look like we were little pot ninjas running around putting up in high places, <laughs> um, and that was pretty interesting. That guy we got on the project, we got on fucking got on live, we got a lot, a lot of views, like. You know, upwards of 20 million um, the first wow. year. Second year was like, yeah, you know, like pretty high numbers. Yeah. If you include, you know, we were on CNN in America and all sorts of shit like that. It's a huge and opportunity. Then, anyways, what was that? It's a huge opportunity with yeah, that. Yeah, well, we're just so exposing them. Like, you know, they're, they're looking for clips for the day because they're, they're like. They're, they're bored shitless. They're, yeah, well, that's, the, the, that's the, the thing of the day, whether it's Father's Day or it's, they're just looking for sound bites, right? Yeah, that's right. how the news works. Right. So the sound bites they were looking for on that pot day were what we were providing for them. <laughs> and we have a good system, thanks to Alec, and, you know, we, we work hard, and he, he's got a good little network of contacts, and we send out our little press releases before, and we tease people, and, you know, obviously, we're not, we're not the best in the world, ever, but we're reasonable, and like I said, we, we like action. Hmm. And we take action, and not many other, no one else we know really. A few people have had rallies and shit like that, but no one. And we we we're not we want we're not competitive about it, but we want other people to do shit too. We want sure. we do all this stuff to inspire other people. Yeah, yeah. should be encouraged. I, I've just walked back in, but just to, to comment on the tail end of that that I just heard, we we do what we know and and where we come from. So it may not be the best approach or it may yeah. not be the, um, the the best thing that people could be doing with their time, but it's, it's what we know and what we know well. So yeah. Yeah. that's why I we that. kind of stick with our angle. And a lot of the stuff we do, we try not to put too much of a message in it. I mean, with the 420 campaigns that we're involved with, it's pretty much just titled Who Are We Hurting? And that's yeah. the only message that comes from the campaign itself. Yeah, right. And it just creates a talking point for other people to get their message across. Sure. So in the past, we've had people represent, such as uh, Roll On uh, Ben, Ro uh, for Ben Oakley and his father. Yeah. Um, they did an eight-minute live segment uh, for the, uh, the third year of the stunt we did. Um, Channel 10, right? 
Yeah, that was on uh, the studio on Channel 10, so yeah. Channel 10's morning, uh, live morning show. Um, and that uh, that was one of the who we heard in campaigns, and that was sponsored by the Hemp Health and Innovation Expo. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And next year, obviously, even a bigger plan since it's 420 for a whole month. Different. <laughs> and um, I, I was potentially going to launch a, a CBD brand, and then we were going to launch in Europe in earlier in the year, and we were going to do a stunt in Berlin. Similar mm -hmm. to what we did it was going to be a combination of two of the year's prior stunts uh, to do an international thing, right? Yeah, right. And anyways, we didn't end up doing that because of some other shit that ended up happening and I went a different direction with the companies that we created first. Mm. And um, and then so Alec and I, we came up with the idea of building a giant fucking 25 foot plus cannabis plant. Basically, or, it was a two-story plant to put in the same place where they erect the Christmas tree. Yes, I was about to say. That's um, awesome. So I went place. into Martin Place, uh, yeah. which, is, which is obviously uh, prime real estate or prime location in the middle of the city. For sure. Um, and also, iconically enough, the, where they put the Christmas tree every year. Yeah. I had great. a little running with the cops. They, they were kind of fucked around a little bit, took our time, yeah. tried to make it look really good. Um, you know, and, and looking back on it, we could have, probably could have done a few things differently. But overall, we were pretty. We weren't super stoked because it got taken down pretty quickly. Mm. But we did. We, we, we did anticipate that, though. From the start, we were anticipating, I think, a lot more uh, uh, problems than what actually came of it. Um, That's cool. We were received rather well. Yeah, at least you weren't um, charged for anything. The, idea, stay the, the idea, the idea actually occurred to me. In, so, in one of the news clips from from the second year where we did the shopping in Kings Cross. Um, Sam from Dopamine Magazine. Oh. He, uh, he he Shout gets, to Sammy. <laughs> he gets interviewed by Channel Ten, and um, he's like, "Yeah, four twenty, it's stone at Christmas." And we're like, "Well, we've got to build us a Christmas tree." <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just logical. <laughs> just, that was the next step. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you guys you take the initiative. It seems like that's the common theme. But like, we we like action. Yeah. You just got to keep doing stuff. Mm -hmm. This is like. Um, even as a as a everyday stoner, it's just uh, who the fuck wants to sit at home sitting around doing nothing all day. I think it takes a while for some people no, to realize that. No, we're at home, that. man. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Go out there and find them. No, uh, that's that's true. There's there's a big world out there to explore. I think some people can get very comfortable within their little bubble, Especially particularly stoners. Yeah. yeah, I do, I do like so to stay in my bubble. Just... I just take the whole old ball out into. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're, you're going around like walking on water. Yes, you ever watch Bubble Boy? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has anyone ever watched Bubble Boy? <laughs> Bubble Boy? No. I've yes. heard, I've heard the, Boy, uh, yeah. the Mac Miller song. Oh, uh, no. This is a movie from like <laughs> early 2000s. It was great. I think it um has uh, Gyllenhaal in it. I think that was the uh, main actor. It was good. Friendly Podcast again? Friendly Aussie Podcast, mate. Friendly Aussie Pods. If we're doing word association, like Balloon Boy. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, you guys have been doing these stunts and now you've kind of linked up with us, so I'm sure 420 next year is going to be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If, um, if we're brainstorming <coughs> some ideas, so let's kill it for a whole month. Um, mm -hmm. okay. HHI Expo will be in Canberra on 18th and 19th of April. Oh, isn't that um, So we'll be down there too, given that the uh, the laws have just been relaxed down there. We'll yeah. be celebrating. We'll see if um, that lasts. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll see if that lasts. Honestly, the federal government's getting cunty. Well, it, when does it actually come in? It's not January. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'd say it'll still be there for April. We should be. We should be right. They overturned the gay marriage thing in Canberra before it went national. Pretty quickly, it was like a month or two. Right. Yeah, that's true. I think it'll be interesting to see the federal government's response. But look, if they can do that, and then in quick succession, well, Melbourne or Victoria can do it. First, and then yeah. They took it back. Yep, that's right. And then took it federally. Yes. Yeah. Right. But, you know, the thing about that was that the Liberal government was doing all that it could to delay that process. That's what the plebiscite was all about. Like, why do you have to get the population to vote about something that they... Or, you already know they're in favour of it, and they're asking for it. Right. So... Well, so you well, find out it's an assumption, before asking if they're in favour. It's an assumption, but it was a pretty well-proven thing. Yeah, it was pretty well-established yeah, totally that 70% right. of the population was in favour. We should just have a truly democratic society like Switzerland. I agree, man. I fucking agree with that 100%. Parliamentarians suck off. We, we can download an app and it has like some kind of fingerprint. <laughs> um, there, there is, then we can vote you know, on things. There's, yeah. a, there's a party that have registered that. Flux, and they right? Were, Flux. Yeah. What is it? Sorry? Flux party. Flux, that's the one. And they were, they were uh, in the uh, most recent election, so you could have voted for them and if enough <laughs> people did, we potentially would be using a Switzerland's like the only truly democratic country in the world and what happens is if something goes to parliament and it goes over 60 40 
in the ruling, then they have a national referendum on that item that everybody has to vote on. So if you could have a system where people could vote online or through their phone... Or even so in an assembly. Or even in idea, person. It wouldn't be that hard to have these booths up. Yeah. They're always set up. It'll, it'd employ people. And it wouldn't just have to be voting. It could be discussion. It could be like, let's talk about the issues rather than just like ticking a box. That could be democracy. Democracy in ancient Athens, that's exactly what it was. It's, it was the yeah, whole scale that. You can scale it. Scalability, so. The thing about uh, neighborhood assemblies is that they can only take care of a certain neighborhood. But if you have like a bunch of little ones, they can band together to create confederations. You can have like it's local decisions being made, but also <laughs> big, higher decisions. It's called the Masons. <laughs> the Masons? <laughs> no, kind of not really, because it's not like you have Stone to. Colors. Not like you have to, uh, you know, sell your we soul do. to join. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> Who controls the pot lines? Yeah. We do. Scomo. <laughs> so you guys need Jesus. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Jesus left me a while ago. He's a friend of mine, actually. Is it? Oh, yeah, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> we have a friend that actually thinks he's the reincarnation of Jesus. He does look like him, to be fair. Yeah, that's right. Maybe yeah. he's right. Maybe that's where we're going to hell. <laughs> Maybe. I am actually looking forward to hell. You'll have nice heavy music and a lot of pot, obviously. So, like, I think I'll fit in. The devil's lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> Love the devil's lettuce. Um, so, yeah, right now, I think the big thing for the cannabis community is to start connecting. Um, so, when you guys do that campaign, I want what I would like to see is other campaigns at the same time, you know, um, going on around the country or at least even on social pushes, you know. Having that press release, in a sense, getting ready for that day, if everyone pushes that out at the same time for whatever ha is happening... It's a bit like Rebellion Week, how they spent a year, like, a year, a week, fucking uh, blocking up the CBD, and they got a lot of media coverage. And it's a similar kind of thing. You don't have to disrupt everybody, but if you can actually make waves in a certain period of time... We're and just making make waves. We need, to, we need action from more people. We want to... We want that that's shit Action does it's make waves, and I guess we that's want, what I'm trying to say. We action want to say. We want yeah, so but that's just a we've simple been doing action thing. For, we've already been doing action. No one else... People don't have the, the, the motivation to do what we do. It's, it's fucking That's a generalization. You, you, no, you, 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 got, you got... If you guys understood the amount of effort that it goes into actually planning and executing, putting... Like, yeah, to, but I think there are plenty of people yearning to do what you guys do. It's just that they don't have the, like... They, 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 they haven't embodied Yeah, but quite often... No, they don't have the fucking... They don't have the hustle. We're having so That's many it, people man. approach it's us. way harder than you think. Saying we like what you right, do. Bro. We want to do the same it's stuff. Hard. We want to be a you part of it. But hustle, man. Then every year we come up with the idea and we're putting together the Action. team or we need extra hands and we're putting out the requests and whatnot and no one's coming to the table and it's always like... The, the, the solid few who we, who we constantly work with. Yeah, I hear that. that and I hear that. Through and making the shit happen. And that's very true. Usually it is like a tight-knit group of people who are really committed to that's not making stuff choice, happen. That's not We're open for anyone who's going to come get on board. And, and, I think and, that you've got to recognise the, the world that we live in is so complex and so um, just basically traumatised. The people who want to do stuff like this, whose dreams like surround this can never reach it and never realize it, never understand it, I'm, never get there. I'm sure and I wonder be, why that is. Like, sure why can't we speak to those people? Why? Well, he's from the western suburbs. He's from his dad's a truck driver. He's to, he didn't come from being an educated person, and he's got a highly <laughs> thriving IQ. And yeah, he's, and that's all good. good. And he's got his family are hustlers, so he's always done shit because he's he's a doer. He's not he just talks about stuff. Yeah, but I, I, I think it. one of the reasons for specifically the cannabis community and not getting quite That's the scary. support that, that we um, we should have considering how many users there are and how many people are victims to these laws and yeah. not even speaking up for themselves really yes. um, is because of the stigma attached to it. And so I would agree with that. A lot of these people aren't in the same position where we are where we've been able to, to secure these corporate clients or, or yes. uh, these Correct. retainers that are obviously paying us to do this kind of stuff. Um, so, so they're worried about losing their jobs or, mm. or having their family shut them out. And or what if they have kids? You know, like that's it. You imagine, don't, like you don't want docs like you like bringing up. Even if you don't do it in front of your child, even if you keep it in a safe location. I mean, people still do medication and alcohol. There are ways to do these things while still being a family person. Yeah, I do. Um, but the stigma attached to it, if they got got to the wrong people or, or such uh, such as docs, to uh, potentially taking the kids, that. Um, that creates this divide and, and this, this fear, I guess. I would say mm. one of the reasons that you guys have the ability to do these campaigns without much fear, you've established yourselves 
um, that other people haven't. You guys work for yourselves. You are and you have put in work. Someone else. And that's gotta be. And you put in the work. Hustle, man. Anyone can do it. It's not yeah, that hard. No, do no. It. no. people have it. responsibilities, dude. Yeah, but we are you a dad? We, we, we have responsibilities. We do you have? Any, how many kids do you have? Fuck, man. You got I, no I idea. Do you have any kids? That's an assumption. No, it doesn't matter. But the thing is, someone else does. Other companies as well. He runs. He runs a security company. He works. We work more than most average people do as well. To settle down with a family. Too, yeah, hustle, like that long term, but we've, we've you've got to work. Hustle, Trust me, bro. Right? I I've taken the same road. I'm on that same path. Not everyone can do it because it is fucking hard. No, but they can. That's just state of mind. Anyone can do it. Correct, but not everyone will do it, and that's the whole point. Yeah, but anyone can. Anyone can do it, but you know, it takes a lot of conditions to be met in order for that person to break out of that. And the question is, how do you allow people to do it? Conditions are all controlled by themselves. Yeah, one hundred percent. You're all the same 24 hours. You've got a cell That's phone. Right. You've got access to culture. You live in the. It doesn't matter if you, you live in oh, you live Death Valley in Nevada, but or you live in fucking Timbuktu in fucking Mali. You've got access to the internet now. Yeah. So you've got the encyclopedia of like Alexandria's library. Look yeah, but the, uh, that's Alexandria kind of true. But prior to Fab existing, you had to look up all of this shit on like forums. It wasn't compiled. It wasn't collated. You still have the capability of doing something. Yeah, you can. You have the capability of doing things. But we can make it easier. The whole point is that the internet is a device that's made it easier for everybody to do everything. So make it easier. Make it easier. Whenever whenever we hit these, whenever we hit these barriers or these things that that look like they're going to whenever we hit these barriers or stuff that look like they're going to end a project or, or or cause a project to come to a stop. That's that's where we really thrive, and we're like, well, this is why we're doing this shit, and no one else yeah, is. Like, yeah. we will find the solution to this problem, cool. we'll overcome it, and we'll fucking do this, whatever the fuck we're trying to do. This is why you will see, like, the people who are in this movement from the beginning are the people who are going to get the successes later. It's because we put the work in, right? Sure. People are then they then you've got the other people who are just coming in just to try and get that money in, right? You saw them at the expo. You but saw it, people it, who are investors, and I just like laugh at them. I'm like. What are you investing in? Why? A medical company with plants behind a fucking wall that look like they're in a prison? Oh, well, cool. And I'm like telling them about what we're though. doing and they just kind of dismiss you straight off. And why? Because they don't see the value in these small root causes that we're doing. They just like, they just chase the money. Well, if it were, we're chasing a passion. Obviously they do see a value because they wouldn't go there and present themselves as an investor if they weren't looking for something that they felt was valuable to invest in. Oh, because so they know it's the future. Still got to give them props for, for, for whichever, but their, their niche might be investing their money in smart decisions and managing it in that way and bringing the connections mm-hmm. and the, the assets they already have in their own portfolio. So it kind of kind of does make sense, and I would rather those people come in and spend the money and be possibly like a silent partner, for example, with other people who actually do know what they're doing and have yeah. a passion for it. I like Regardless that. of if they have to pass on a little bit of commission back, because then we yeah. can make bigger steps in a yeah, bigger 100%. amount of time, and then it's done and controlled by the right people who should sure. be doing it, rather than the people who have the money to do it. Yeah, already, like the knowledge and the expertise. Time. Yeah. yeah, true. I like that take. So, what we're learning here is we really need to figure out how we're going to get more people involved. Yeah, and that's, and that's complicated and controversial. I think we're slowly but surely we're <laughs> making, making... Well, steps. look, you've now it's met a few new people that are trying to get involved, <laughs> and like, we've got capabilities that others don't because we've created a few things of our own. We've met people that you guys probably haven't met yet, and it's just a matter of connecting all of these dots... Puzzle pieces. ...and then suddenly just putting on that attack. Well, that is our hustle. That your hustle has led you to hustle us. And Each hustle our hustle has led you to, to, to you. Consistency is just as big of a deal. One hundred percent. So this is why we just got to keep pushing. And the other thing, though, is you have to remember, a lot of people yeah. are profiting from cannabis being illegal. You got to keep that in mind. If you look at the Instagram right now, how many yeah, people I, are selling I, I don't things necessarily and saying that. they're part of the community? When they are actually profiting off the well, community greatly, you, yeah, but people have still got to survive, and if people it's are buying, oh, I, I don't disagree. But um, we've allowed a lot of these people to come into these communities, and they start selling these six, seven hundred dollar ounces, and they're saying they are a big part, and they're helping this community out. But are they? Yeah, well, I, I, what I, are they doing? Supply, I, she's I, supply and demand. I'd never been. You got to pay for it. It's like a around. supreme beanie or a fucking a collab shoe that you can't buy. It's a fucking supply and demand. That's supply it. and demand, but this person, th- th- these people, it doesn't matter. Supply yeah. and demand, like they're helping and healing. Supply and demand dictates everything. And you're delusional if you think differently. And when you live in a capitalist society, that's the definition of like, you pay taxes, and that's one of the other defining points, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Hustle, dude, makes the world go around.
Oh, 100%. Where's the, follow the money flow back to the rich white guy because they control the value of money. So if you control the value of money, you control the world. Seems like an abstraction. Not really? Yeah, I know. How? Well, the people with power have actually constructed this supply and demand system. Because no, the reality no, is... They didn't, they didn't necessarily construct it. They took advantage of it. They saw a flaw, like... But they, they, they're opportunists. They but didn't, they don't, they they didn't just, have the level of control that you They're not they just do. opportunists. They're people who have shaped the systems for a certain extent. But that's opportunity. That's, I agree with that. That's, agree. that's opportunity. The system has created itself. I agree with that too. Yeah, yeah. and there's like, this doubt, you know, the, the, Systemic the Catholic issues. Church created a new, you know, a yeah. new system in the New Testament and yeah. then they, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is <laughs> so you go back and through, forward through this for a little... Sure. For 5, I think I can agree with you for the most part, but I reckon that there are things outside of market competition. I think in the capitalist society, you don't have to be strictly working upon the capitalist value rules. Like, you can do things that are outside of that. And of it's cool. Your stunts are technically outside of exactly. that. Exactly. Totally. Outlaw. We totally well, encourage outlaw behavior. A lot of them have cost us a lot out of pocket for right, those yeah. specific stunts. Um, sure, right. And uh, further to that, probably cost us a few contracts that we maybe made more than one if it wasn't yeah. for. So we spend our own uh, money on this. Negative. Yeah, no, I hear that. I we hear spend that. a lot of our own money. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh -huh. And we'll do it again and again and again. Uh -huh. Just because. We'd like attention. We'd like well, it, but honestly, with the with the Huey yeah. Herding thing, we are, are currently being deemed as criminals because of this one Ooh, fucking yeah, thing <laughs> when people can go out and get fucking drunk and, and have all this alcohol fueled violence and we can't even smoke a fucking bong and hang out in a peaceful manner in and around a drum circle. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Take away, we need more drum circles. Yeah, got to go to Berlin. Oh, wait, they found it. Oh, they did too. Yeah. So what else do you want? Is it back? People are still there. People are still there. People are still there. Good. Hang on. So what else do you guys want to know? Thank ah. you. Tell us about your other companies. Yeah, well, shout outs to the Dank Shop first. Haha. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Cheers, guys. What are we? What? What? What dab are we having here? Uh, Dank Shop. 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 Puffco mm -hmm. Peak, but what's the actual concentrate? Uh, I think it is Crude Breath Live Resin. Ooh, it's a yeah. I got a tiny like stuck in a deer. So what else do you guys do, Miguel? What do you do? Outside of the old and Grace Code. He talks way too much. <laughs> I do actually, but just not, <coughs> not, not right now. Um, so I co-owned a uh, media company, Undefined. Yep. Based in Sydney, uh, Alexandria. Um, <coughs> Yeah, and I just last year met up with Grayco and Bowling on a budget doing the Red Bull flag tag. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's actually pretty funny. I don't there's think I've there's seen some that. there's some content on YouTube if you guys wanna wanna check it out. A whole bunch yeah. of content that yeah, didn't we make won, it uh, too. <laughs> we won People's Choice. We won People's that. Choice Award 2018. Red Bull, Red Bull flag tag. <laughs> Nice. The bat didn't, didn't really get to fly, <laughs> but I mean, it would have flown. <laughs> camels aren't meant to fly. That's what we discovered. <laughs> uh, I'm so confused. <laughs> I haven't seen this. I don't know if it's for you. Like, you guys are not familiar with Flight Tag? For, no, for those who that. are familiar, uh, it's basically you build your own aircraft. So, uh, uh, wow. It's more of a hang glider. It's a flying so, machine! So, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Given we live in Australia, the nanny state, I guess the, whoever was insuring the whole event uh, gave them some pretty tough regulations. Um, but we basically built our own flying machine. I suppose in the backyard, took it down and flew it off at Miss Macquarie's chair with a nice view of the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge Ooh. in the background. Um, and that was basically judged on uh, a few things such as presentation, uh, flight distance. Uh, Is someone in it? Yeah, so I, I piloted it off. Oh, so it's like a glider plane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Which we, the one, the we, built was just, the one we built was just like, it looked similar to a he was glider. The um, <laughs> so we built Camels Puma. aren't meant to fly. Puma so, had a, uh, an entry, which was uh, just a giant shoe, uh, which also plummeted. So um, during the testing stages, we were quite cocky. It seemed to be, seemed to be working quite well. Um, we were practicing our running landing stops because we thought that we'd make it to the island on the other side. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, turned out just kind of <laughs> We went down. Make it to um, the other side. Hell of a drive. It was, um, there were a few problems from our ordinary, uh, ordinary uh, engineer. Yeah. Aeronautical. Sorry, that puff code's got me going. Yep. What am I doing with puff code? Yeah. It's a cool piece. It is. What happened when you flew it, man? 
Uh, we fucking plummeted. It's not I right. ended up in the water and um, <laughs> I was winded for the first time in my life. So I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Oh, and no. not the be not the biggest fan of water to begin with. Uh, I haven't really been known to head on down to the beach like fucking silver spoon fed me <laughs> here. Um, but uh, yeah, so I plummeted the uh, the jet skis. Jet skis rushed in, um, and old mate but fucking picked me up. Beaches. I was still I was still um, in shock I'm and uh, and uh, winded, and uh, spat water straight I'm in his face. Sorry, I'm that clearly. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah, so uh, sorry, uh, That's sorry. That's the that area's like. area. Um, but yeah, then they uh, took me back to shore, and by then I had got me got me breath back and um, walked off with the lovely <laughs> flight attendants. <laughs> <laughs> lovely flight the attendants. We sent three back in the water. We joined the mile high. Then yeah, it was sweet. And uh, so what else does you, do you still do the media company, Miguel? Or? Yeah, yeah, so just going on from that, that's when I met these dudes up uh, from then and I guess just from, from that time that I met the, these dudes, we just clicked on and then just been working with them uh, since then with other different things like the stunts and other different uh, stuff that they do that need some media coverage, <coughs> but yes. apart from that, yeah, yeah, so, Miguel. so uh, do run the media company, we do a lot of uh, live, live events, um, it seems to be a nation where, where there's money at the moment, so we're trying to push it that as well. But at the same time, we try to uh, stay creative and do some music videos here and there. So, that's all we're focusing on. What should we do on floor recently? Uh, scratches, yeah, records. scratches records. Yeah. Shout out Scratches records. Yeah, yeah, probably scratches probably another record. Yeah, cool. I don't follow I produced that and hip hop directed on yeah, that hip -hop. track on that one. Hip -hop, yeah. So we work it's with we fun. work with Miguel um, on real. Everyone born on a budget. Um, I've just uh, got North another, beaches. another, um, you know, from the North Beaches and the Gold Coast. <laughs> and um, I used to have an action sports background kind of thing, I used to run a magazine, did a bunch of media shit. You're and a professional now I've got skier, aren't you? Space, <laughs> and so with some, with, I've got a, a holding company called Byron Bay Botanicals. Okay, yeah. you're um, And um, basically, uh, we're in the process right now of. Um, we just opened our first cannabis dispensary in Central California, which opens uh, the day after tomorrow. So Ooh. that's a year in the works. And then um, I've invested and co created a pet supplement CBD and hemp company called Inspired Paws. Yeah. And then the next name. thing we're working on is a uh, my, my partner who I used to do a lot of skiing with, he um, has a whole bunch of the licenses that are really hard to get. And um, we're setting up a Pretty cool extraction, manufacturing, and distribution hub in Mammoth Lakes in California, and our dispensary is in Levining, which is the western entrance to Yosemite National Park, wow. which is the second biggest tourist attraction in California. That's really exciting. That's cool. So, like 5.6 million people a year come past there. Hmm. So we've got the only license in that whole county. Um, <laughs> Whoa, so damn. that's been a long process and a lot of bullshit to get through and. You know, at the moment, my, my friend is doing all the M-Tracks, which is basically all the tracking system for all of the different uh, legal cannabis products, which, which will be processed through the dispensary. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of the outlaw shit that's happening in California is going to start getting more police. Yeah. Hence why weed maps, I'm sure you guys are aware of, got in trouble for, for uh, all, listing all of the different dispensaries that were potentially run illegally that aren't, don't Actually, have the right licenses and stuff like that. Uh, okay, yeah. And then did you know, Weed Maps just said basically, you know, we're just a carrier, we're just you know, we're just listing directory. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? We're a directory, so we have no we're not liable for that shit. Which they got off on, on in, in California state um, state law. So that's mm. interesting. Um, I'm launching a couple of other brands that I can't really talk about at the moment. Um, another lifestyle branch with a friend of mine who runs Maxim magazine in Australia, potentially is coming out soon. And then we've got another company called Byron Bay CBD, which should be launching in the new year. So we're hoping that CBD gets legalized in Australia. Um, that would be really fucking helpful for us. Mm. Um, we have the interest in and doing, everybody else. We have the <laughs> yeah. in doing in doing a lot of different stuff. Um, Alec and I were working on a few projects with a new, uh, potentially could be a massive media agency out of America called the Planet Cannabis Entertainment Network. Um, cool. They've just done a seventy. A seventy million dollar distro deal with Verizon um, Media, which does AOL and Yahoo and a whole yeah, bunch of other geez. stuff like that, Huffington Post, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a new platform that's coming out, and they've got a lot of big budget. They're going to pretty much create a lot of crazy stuff, and basically they're looking to be a slight replacement to YouTube, 
because like you were talking about before, in the counter space, a lot of these brands, they can't advertise. Yeah. So if you can provide a space where with unique content, educational content, mm. that these brands can actually advertise on, then people, you know, these big the companies, they're going to be able to, to advertise legally on that space, not under FDA uh, control in America, yeah, well, and they so. can do geo-based um, location, um, you know, specifics for different brands, and, you know, they, they get money off the pre-rolls or the mid-rolls or whatever the fuck that they want to do, you know, but then you'll be able to advertise on there, you know, like Ignite got in trouble with Dean Wilson with the... The Supercross, did you guys see yep. that? Yep. And then Dan Bilzerian posted the, the photo of how he's reached, yada, yada, yada. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, if there are big mark, there's, there's big opportunities in the market. People are throwing their, their shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is that, you know, you need to be able to spend a lot of money to be able to make it stick. To be able to become mm. an aspirin of your industry, that's a legacy project that takes three to five years to accomplish. Right. Oh, I think it takes a lifetime, not three to five years. Well, look at you fucking YouTube, look at Instagram. That's showed your your, yeah. your timeline I now is, is, yeah. has has shrunk. Their life, their 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 Facebook's on the level of Apple, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, especially yeah. if they aren't, uh, you know. Yeah broken Oops. apart by antitrust shit, you know, they'll be... So, yeah. Really and then but, that. but the other thing, though, is what you're... Something, you are correct in um, that they have managed to become this kind of giant mega business co corporation. But when I say a lifetime, that doesn't... They might exist now, but they might not exist in 20 years. I don't think Facebook's going to live much more. I think Facebook's got 10 more so years. So what will come to replace yeah. it? Because I feel like well, there's Facebook now a need for it in life. Facebook will exist in other ways. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we, we don't know it yet, but there's definitely... Until the, 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 like, the next thing. Yeah, until the next thing. The only people using Facebook at the moment are really older people. Yeah. And yeah. Once or lame you, people like me. Yeah. I'm still on it. Well, we're still on it. But like, how it's active are you on it? It's not as much as what it used to be, maybe yeah, like... Yeah, but you're two, active on two, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but they, that's why Facebook's yeah, smart. They've, they've moved on to other things. They're competitors and then adds them to their list. Just yeah. like... So the, the juggernauts of their industry, they're now... It's just like a, the four, like the car boom of the late 20s, 30s, 40s. Out the Ford came out of a Chrysler... You know, all these big, you know... Yeah. yeah. Unique, yada, Market yada, yada. Yada. 100%. But, you know, you've got all these privacy things, you know, if that could take them down. That, you've that also so got much. the thing where... I mean, the privacy thing is such a problem precisely because you have this kind of centralised corporate approach to social networking. Like, maybe there is actually some other way of doing it based upon, like, a peer-to-peer -peer structure, which hasn't been exploited yet. Yeah, well, then you, you have to offer someone something of value yeah. that yeah. makes people give a fuck to the point that they're I think that's true too. willing to change over it's their social habits yeah. in order to be able to potentially invest in them. And then, you know, Google tried it with Google+. Plus. They did, and failed miserably. Failed miserably. <laughs> I had a, multiple conversations with, with especially tech people that thought that Google was like this fucking, you know, amazing god-like company. Well, Google is taking over with the phones. Everyone I meet AI is a Google. I remember having a conversation with... good, bro. With <laughs> <Will> <laughs> I, I had a conversation with Will yeah, I am from the, the Black Rock Boys at, yeah. the, at this launch party for, um... What's the fucking... The, the uh, nightclub at... A uh, marquee in Sydney. Oh, yeah. And I ended up chatting to him for about 15 minutes about the Illuminati and about the <laughs> and yada yada. And like, I've got... I'm really into ancient history and all that, all that kind of stuff. I've yeah, been cool. sitting here for hours and hours. But he calls himself a futurist. Oh, this yeah. is about four years ago and he was tell, talking to me and he's like, it's like Google's the new Illuminati, man. You know, like talking about how, you know, information is power and then that they're yeah. going to take over. And in a way, they kind of are, you know, and it's kind of True. interesting. So, True. but, but those up? companies have the power now that they just acquire their competitor. Yeah, they're hard to depose. Yeah. Because you have this hard. thing in the market where if you're ahead... Yeah. The, the growth is exponential. It's yeah. Just like, yeah, so you just get you bought just out. You scale quicker. Yeah. Yeah. And now my question to you is, how much do you know about crypto? A little bit. But, you know, that can only be, that can only be just, you know, disruptive to a point. No, that can be completely disruptive. You can build a decentralized platform such as Facebook or, so, uh, or Instagram. It could be based on that. That's built on a cryptocurrency with the idea that you spend time on this platform, you're actually going to help power this platform because you're using your resources to power it. And then as a result, you have a transactional level within this platform. So imagine if Instagram, as you're liking things, you get mini micro credits. And as people like your shit, you get mini micro credits. And it all becomes an ecosystem of people paying for each other's time on this space. 
there is competitors. It's just, it's going to take a while to happen. And I honestly think the world will move yeah, towards it. will get acquired, though, won't you? I think, <laughs> ah, this is where you don't understand cryptocurrency, because, bro. Yeah, like... Cryptocurrency is distributed. You can't be acquired. And it's there's, there's no one company for a crypto. Yeah. So you, they can't acquire this, the hosting service, though? No, no. because it's distributed um, it's just peer-to-peer. Peer. Yeah. You, you know how torrents kind of work, yeah? Yeah. You know how like one, like anyone could be hosting that file? Well, cryptocurrency works in the same way. The reason Bitcoin's so powerful is because it's got a we worldwide so network of people who are powering it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I could be running a mining machine to help power that network because I can get enough credits there to return my power bill and That's I'm just good. earning extra passive income. Yeah. This is going to become a mainstream thing in my opinion. Yeah. It's going to probably take another 10 years for it to even reach anywhere near scale. I think, I think there's already a platform that's doing similar to this, which is called Mines. So maybe you guys Mines? should check it out. Yeah, M-I-N-D-S. Okay. I'll check it um, where, oh, where, which, is, which is what, what you were kind of explaining, how like if you like something, you would get a coin or something, you know yeah. what I mean? And then with that, you can use it to even boost your own post. Yeah. Like if you're running a business and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah. I think it works similar. Because I'm pretty sure it's blockchain, it's open source. Yeah, oh, it 100%. So, then so it's, a it's a crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, mine's is, I don't know, like maybe within five to ten years. Yes. It could be yeah, the next no, that's big, the idea. Like, big yeah. thing. But what I really like the idea of, imagine if you had YouTube, right? And you watch a video and you you actually have to pay for every video you watch, but it's tiny, like a few cents. Yeah. And the creator is going to get that directly. There's no intermediate, you know, no 30% cut, no like bullshit, that. right? Same with Uber. You could have Uber without the company doing without it. Without the middleman. You could just have yeah, getting people paid. finding rights. <laughs> yeah. And that is like an app that covers everything. You don't right. need competitors. There's, there's so much potential rights. here they can negotiate in crypto. The price. The bigger, that's why the governments are yeah. so against it because... Yes. Yeah. It's a scary premise yeah. if people could govern themselves. Yeah, they, these big companies, these big bureaucracies, they're, they're the ones with the power, they're the ones directing things, and they don't want to let that go. Yeah. So that's all And it is. yeah, we've got a really big battle, but yeah. the thing is, people are getting sick of shit. True. People yeah. are getting sick of shit, and there's alternatives pop along, and people start looking. It could take 50 years, but I think the way we see um, capitalism and corporations run today, in 20 years, it's going to be completely It'll be different. obsolete. It, yeah. it, it, this system cannot last how, it, how it's lasting at the moment. We've reached kind of a critical mass where we're starting to see these actual problems. Yeah, you're seeing the problems of Google, you're seeing the problems of Facebook, you're seeing the problems of YouTube. Yeah. Everyone's starting to see them, and as, as they happen more and more and more, people are going to be like, well, I need to move somewhere else because this is not stable. Problems breed solutions. And Correct. I think that's what we'll end up finding. And it might not have to be exactly crypto, but I think it makes a lot of sense to have to, be heading the, the, to head in that the kind of direction shit, because yeah. then you're taking away powers from central figures yeah. and yeah. you're making it equal for and everyone. Giving it to, yeah, to everyone. That's it. that's my big yeah. belief in crypto. Um, buy, buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Buy it. Yeah, right now it's kind of been steady. I think stuck at 12K AUD. Uh, yeah, about there. I, yeah. I mainly float in the US. It's like 8K. Yeah, it's, it's 8 We We moment. hit like 10K for like two months. It was really good. Like I trade a lot of crypto. So, yeah. um, it's, it's been steady though at the moment. So I, I, 8K I, I, is looking I think, like a nice little bottom. Yeah. And maybe I think it could go down to 7 but I did hear that stable. someone removed or like a thousand Bitcoin like just yesterday the day before, just oh, like sorry. that. Yeah, which equal to like eight point something million. Oh my billion God. probably. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a real cash in, isn't it? Yeah. We'll so see what happens. Interesting it's, um, space, but yeah, definitely buy some Bitcoin if you have that kind of cash. <laughs> you don't even need to buy much, just buy a lot. If you buy now. Yeah. Like one Pretty thing simple. I've told people which blows their minds, if you bought fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin every week, even at the peak, which was about twenty six thousand Australian, if you did it say starting that week at the highest point, you'd still be up about fifty percent to this day. Whoa. But if it was at the and an hour at twelve point, that means it can only go down, so how would you be up? Because it's your overall value has gone up higher than the value of our dollar. So, for example, it yeah. went down. It was at uh, twenty six, and then it dropped down to about five thousand Australian at one point. Mm. Yeah. So, and now it's sitting at about uh, twelve. So, right? if you bought at the peak, you would have lost money by the thing going down. But then the next week you buy fifty. Then the next week fifty. So, uh, it, when you average it out over that long period of time, you're mm. going to be up about fifty percent because you would have still bought it in the lower periods than what it yeah. is at now. Right. So it's something that I think people need to consider. It's like, why, anyone can afford $50 a week. Well, most people can afford $50 a week when That's true, though. you've got like, an income. Yeah. It's like, it's a little interesting in terms of an investment because if you, do, if you are going in it, it's, you're actually helping that value rise. You know, so 
the technically it's a bit of a pyramid scheme. It's highly uh, speculative. It's it's, it's uh, I don't know. I, I just back crypto. I'm a fan. I'm a fan because of what it has the potential to do. Yeah, we shall for it. So, you gotta so learn. before we wrap this up, I guess um, yeah, we'll good give idea. a big shout out to uh, Glass Profits for coming okay. on board with um, with myself, the Craze Co, and Will Ballin on the budget. Uh, yeah, Jake, the, the mysterious Glass of Profits. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and to do the uh, so. He's yeah, single props ladies. To, props to all of those guys for coming on board to help with the photo booth at the HHI. Um, props to No One Network for smashing it out the park with the with the imagery and, and running the booth all weekend. Um, and props to the expo themselves for having us and, and for um, having that uh, uh, that willingness to, to do some fun shit, I guess. Um, we should encourage yeah. more of that with, with everything. Everyone really likes having fun and a bit of a laugh. Um, Thanks for so helping us with our video and, and film and photos. Yeah, no, nah, your um, your host was, was <laughs> awesome yeah. from what I, what I saw. Sure. Um, so I can't I can't wait to Alexa. see how, how those exports come out. Um, yeah, yeah I, do, I think that should be some great great content. Yeah. Um, and thanks for having us in, in tonight and yeah. for uh, coming out to chat. It was awesome. Thanks for coming. Viva la Mar Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what we all love. out to and all your hospitality. Yeah. Thank you. Um, awesome. So, no, 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 one quick message. No, no, ask us more questions message. if you want to ask. We're gonna go. Man, this dude's an attention seeker. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we we're keep going, go. but we already have about an hour, so. Nah, what I'm going to say, the last thing I think we need to kind of take from this podcast is do more shit. Yeah. Yeah, fucking hustle. Right. Fucking do yeah, more do shit. shit. Hustle, together. you want legal weed, you want like you want to be people, in the weed hold world. Hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about whatever's holding you back. Stop worrying, worrying about, about what people think. Hold yeah. each other accountable yeah. and, and write a to-do list and do do and something every do day. It. Start your day, make your fucking bed, meditate for 10 minutes. Do it with intention and purpose. Write a to-do list and just try yes. and do three to five things a day yeah. in the interest of what you want to achieve. Build those if habits. you do that every day, I'm not a consistent person, but no. I try to do this. Even just making your bed in the morning, routine. So yeah. Just a little slight little bit of that. Makes you a more productive person. Makes it automatic. You know, I've, I've blogged every day on my website, bar maybe 10 days in the last seven years. And I've Fuck like, yeah. between average, between two to seven posts a day, you know? So you have to have consistency and you gotta hustle and you gotta hold people accountable. And it's hard to have like minded people around you, especially in a small fishbowl in Australia, because the potential economic um, retribution that you're gonna get from doing something like this is, you know, it's only small, you know, but it is part. It is these microcosmoses can change culture, can change reality. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you have to hustle. You have to make shit happen, and you have to do as much as you can in order to be able to do it. You mm -hmm. know, like you got to help each other, and it's, and in Sydney, you know, everyone kind of hates on each other, and we yeah. we we've, we've, we've rolled with a, a lot of different random people, and we've got overseas in California and Europe. We've, you know, we've got a pretty diverse collective of you know interesting people and we don't you know we don't hate on each other we just we, we're all from different backgrounds and de different ethnicities yeah, but we all connect whether it's through weed or where it's you know through sexy women or it's through action sports or graffiti and art or you know one of our friends runs a our friend Chris he runs a charity in Bogota where he feeds the homeless that's that it's it's a Bogota, Bogota street tours yeah Put so, that in the uh, article for the podcast. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. So you know, it's, you know, it's, you got to hustle, man. You got we we have a lot of people that we look up to, and we see <clears> that there's potential, you know, wherever you're from. But especially with the internet, it's breaking down barriers. And so our lesson, our our, our viewpoint is to you know start small, and then you know one day if you water a, a little plant, it can turn into a redwood. Hmm. Or really good buds. Or Jack and the Beanstalk. Cool, I like that too. <laughs> Some magic beans. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Alex is still looking for his magic beans. <laughs> uh, Alright, thanks guys. Well, thanks for having me. Hustle Cheers, guys. more guys. Um, Live long and hustle. Yeah. Sorry about how much editing this is going to require. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that hard. apology was important to me. Thank you. <laughs> I, I feel for you, and if you want some help, send it over and we'll try to get a nice workflow going. And I appreciate that, man. I'll see what I can do. But, no yeah. worries. Cheers. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the Thank things you that know. you guys do too. We appreciate it. Thanks oh, that's right. That means a lot. No worries. We appreciate it. Fuck PGR. Fuck PGR. <laughs>